Good afternoon, everyone. Bihar's antiquity is evident from the fact that its name is derived from the word Vihara, which essentially translates to a uh, monastery. And this is a place. Bihar is a place where various cultures they come together in a cauldron. Various, uh, various Sikh, Muslim, Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist shrines are abound in this land, and this is the land where. Uh, a lot of great major empires, the early empires, they rise, they rise, uh, they rose and fell. The passage of the Ganga, in fact, it flows wide and deep, enriching the plains of Bihar before finally meeting the deltoid region of Bengal. And even we often talk about an old university, one of the oldest universities in the world, which was still recently relatively recently slumbering in the void of time so enough accolades to the state so i welcome you all to this ses uh, session of discussion on uh, 67th uh, bihar public service commission prelims now you must be wondering am i a day late or uh, maybe you know you have, have i not wondered about that phrase that the uh, the early bird catches the worm but actually the fact is not that the fact is that we at integrated edu systems we wish to share a hearty and healthy meal with you and not just dietary boards we'll come to that so this session is going to be very enlightening for your convenience i have specially demarcated it in this uh, form section wise because if you have noticed not only the public service commission we have bpsc has uh, change the order of questions in the four sets it has also changed the order of the options in the four sets now you know why you can uh, you know speculate why bpsc really did that so without that i have just uh, we'll be discussing set a and according to that i have marked the question numbers but for your convenience so that it becomes easier for you to understand each and every question and relate to that uh, I have just divided into various sections and here you can also uh, get very well uh, adapt, adapt to what the pattern has been to the BPSC prelims. And mind you, I will not be discussing the cutoff because that is something which, uh, you know, uh, which is not uh, uh, at all healthy for the preparation in the long run. If you are confident enough, just uh, the prelims is over, just go ahead and start preparing for the mains. Even God forbid, if uh, the prelims, you are not able to crack the prelims, but that knowledge which you have for mains, that will not only benefit you for other it, uh, state public service commissions, but enrich you. It may also help you in the grander stage that is Union Public Service Commission, that is the CSE, Civil Service Examination. So we'll start with one of the important or interesting sections uh, for me personally, that is science general science so some questions demand uh, explanation some questions uh, do not and i know you will be all uh, impatient so that i uh, you know just uh, conduct all this explanation or discuss the answers in haste but some questions which are interesting or difficult especially the science uh, part was uh, considered to be difficult so i'll be discussing that so just uh, begin. So this is the 30 questions were asked from general science, which was on the tougher side. So the working principle of washing machine is centrifugation. Nothing to discuss in that. Centrifugation is basically when you can take the example of a car. When we are sitting in the car, so when it turns, when it uh, turns in the left or right direction, then we experience a force towards the outer side. So that is what is known as the centrifugal force. It is a kind of apparent force. So in the washing machine also, the clothes are revolving. So you can get the gist. Then the speed of light will be minimum while passing through. Out of these options, the answer will be glass. Now, if you have uh, read about the refractive index in school, so higher the refractive index or higher the density of that particular material, greater will be the bending of the light and which will in turn affect the uh, velocity the speed of light so in this case glass is the densest medium out of the four so the answer will be glass then which of the following is not a vector quantity vector we know that it has magnitude as well as direction we have velocity torque displacement all of these are vector quantity there is nothing much to explain speed is just a magnitude value so it is a scalar quantity and 
now if spinning speed of the earth increases then the weight of the body at the equator will now this is a complicated question i happen to come across uh, this formula because i have studied uh, for the engineering exams so this is actually normally what we say normally what we say that uh, weight of any object will be equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity but g normally what we say is that general 9.8 meter per second square but this is the g should be for any particular point on the equator it is not exactly the g is not exactly constant so it varies with the rotation or varies at a particular latitude so in this case we use this formula so g dash the actual resultant acceleration due to gravity will be equal to g minus this is a constant omega square cos square lambda where omega is the speed of the spinning earth and lambda is the value of the latitude so at equator lambda will be, can be considered as zero so cos zero will be one now we have to consider this value so omega since the omega is increasing so this value this whole value this will go down and hence g dash will go down and hence w the weight since it is equal to mg it will also go down so the weight will decrease then this is just a factual question who is the first person to define speed that is galileo galilei then uh, this is a uh, an interesting concept which i can so you can read the question or you might have already so this is the avogadro's law instead of reading the question instead of reading the question i'll just come to this diagram which can explain so under constant pressure and temperature conditions what avogadro's law states is that if we add or if we increase the volume by a certain extent then the value of the moles or the amount of gas will also increase in the same ratio in simple explanation this is the initial proportion of when the beaker is containing the gas or the volume so that volume is 22.4 liters just for reference and the value the moles of that gas the quantity of that gas is equal to one mole so when we if we increase the volume of the gas to 44.8 liters that is twice of this so the value will also become two moles so in numericals in chemistry it may ask uh, that if the you know we can uh, do like this that we can write that n1 upon n2 n1 upon n2 will be equal to v1 upon v2 so just an additional portion then theory of relativity uh, relativity there is no rocket science in that now this is slightly you know complicated uh, phenomena so the thomson effect so this is the gen, uh, general you know thermoelectric effect if you have heard it is the thomson effect is a type of thermoelectric effect so according to thermoelectric effect whenever a conductor or two or more conductors when electricity is passed through it then it produces heat or vice versa also when heat is passed through that uh, conductor then electricity might be produced so thomson seebeck and uh, uh, this peltier effect they are examples of thermoelectric effect the only difference the major difference between the thomson effect and seebeck and peltier as you can see in the diagram is the thomson effect involves only the one type of conductor one type of material whereas in seebeck effect two different types of conductors for example copper or iron may be uh, there and because of that temperature difference the temperature difference that causes the electricity to get into proportion so according to this there is due to temperature variation along a single conductor potential variation occurs along it so the answer will be thomson effect now this if you have uh, tried to burn burn a paper uh, via the magnifying lens by placing it uh, under the magnifying the magnifying lens placed between the paper and the sun don't do that uh, of course so basically magnifying glass if you have used i've just uh, i'll not elaborate on it so there are uh, in optics in uh, physics there are several uh, places or adjustments which can be made to uh, distinguish or modify the functioning of that lens so this is the the important point to know notice that here when the object is placed between the focus and the center of the lens so that is o so this causes a virtual image 
this dotted line in, uh, indicates a virtual image this virtual image is bigger than the original object so it appears to be magnified i'll not discuss all the ray diagrams that is beyond the scope then paramagnetic theory normally magnetism comprises of three types that is ferromagnetic paramagnetic and diamagnetic in the decreasing order of that metal being influenced under the uh, under the effect of a magnet so in we already know iron and nickel are ferromagnetic elements when a magnet is uh, uh, brought in close proximity to these elements then their interior uh, dipole or uh, alignment because of free electrons they are aligned easily in a particular direction and they retain magnetism in a more stronger way mercury is diamagnetic and platinum is paramagnetic this is just fact this is through experiments the nucleus of atom consists of protons and neutrons there is uh, no no rocket science although uh, uh, recent studies have indicated otherwise but we'll go by the ncrt then metallurgical process in which a metal is obtained in fused state is smelting iron is an example then constituents of brass brass is an alloy zinc and copper nothing much to discuss quick lime very a common question that is cao it is a white colored uh, solid which is used in several purposes and uh, one of them is used in the blast furnace for extracting the cast iron out of hematite ore then we have when it rusts now the important point of this is the mass of that particular object does not increase or decrease by itself it is the actual if we say that a railing is rusted or an object as a whole which contains iron that as a whole is rusted so under the influence of oxygen and moisture the rusting will take place so that iron the weight of iron in itself should uh, is not supposed to change but according to the question uh, the way it has been presented and by uh, previous experiences also it is going to increase then decrease why increase because during rusting uh, iron will be oxidized and it will also get uh, the moisture content the oh component will be there and when it becomes flaky or loose it will also for example you might have seen uh, the old iron structures so the flakes they start to wither or they start to dissipate away so then it decreases so this is the concept which should be then this is the white metal now according to this i have checked this thoroughly white metal is actually an alloy which contains various uh, other elements uh, they can be cadmium bismuth and uh, lead so all these are normally toxic in nature so these are alloys not a particular metal although the name is metal and another piece of information is that white there is a metal which is known as white gold and that metal is platinum so according to me the answer should be a i have written the explanation you can read it then we have read about the noble gases so noble metals also uh, we can uh, very well gauge from the uh, nomenclature that noble metals will be are those which are obtained in the pure or raw form in nature and obviously those will be the uh, mostly the precious elements i have written the examples this is pt ag and au chemical symbols for platinum silver and uh, gold and uranium and lead are obviously normally they are found in ores one of the example of uranium uh uranium 235 we have uh, we know, know the ores and uh, lead we have galena one ore is that then this is again an interesting question so in the way if you have uh, don't have the time or you cannot recollect where you how to you know come to this conclusion so in simple if uh, you know in foreign countries where there is a uh, when the ice it develops on the it ice accumulates on the road so in order to melt that ice the people there they spray salt on that road so what example uh, so what happens is that what happens is if uh, this is the h2 molecules so that salt salt is basically nacl in most of the forms so the nacl is ionic it has an ionic bond so this interferes or gets attached to the components the elements in this and that is why it prevents the water from freezing from attaining a crystalline structure so addition of salt it 
decreases the freezing point of water that is if freezing point of water is 0 degree celsius so it will further decrease it can go to negative values also so normally at high temperatures high, high te at 0 degree celsius also the ice will easily melt and boiling point of water again the same reason this NaCl will interact with H2O and it will form a strong bond with it due to this being polar and this being ionic and thus it will not be able to break those bonds and get uh, and uh, get involved in evaporation okay so this first option is correct then when methyl alcohol is added to water boiling point of water increases now methyl alcohol is not ionic it is a volatile substance and it is polar in nature like uh, water so in this case by if we add salt boiling point would have increased so in this case what happens is i have given an example so for example a is just pure water h2o and b is methanol or uh, methyl alcohol is CH3OH so ideally what would have uh, what should have happened was this uh, like salt when this was is dissolved in uh, water the bond should have strengthened but there is a term known as hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding which is weaker as compared to the bonds which are formed between water water molecules themselves and methyl alcohol or methanol themselves so since this ab bond is weaker than these two bonds it becomes easier to break and since it is already weak we require less amount of temperature to bring it to the vapor pressure that is equal to the vapor pressure that is exerted by the surroundings which we define as boiling point so at a lesser temperature less than 100 degrees celsius at normal condition maybe 70 80 90 the water will start boiling so this is also correct now this is a very so this uh, i have also mentioned raoult's law raoult's law you can study if you have free time main constituent of biogas there is nothing much to discuss in that is methane then uh, bright red color this is often asked in state civil services and uh, normal uh, examinations so this is strontium other you know the sodium yellow magnesium white uh, sulfur is actually part of that propellant or fuel other is uh, chromium oxide you can note which provides the green color so sodium you can also relate sodium we have uh, like lamps sodium provides a yellow color then salt loving plants there is no uh, you know rocket science they are halophytes so we have uh, studied often about the mangroves uh, mangroves uh, in the sundarban delta and other places so xerophytes uh, they are adapted to the arid conditions mesophytes are normal uh, water conditions and glycophytes are sort of uh, reverse or opposite of halophytes they are salt sensitive so variation of salt they cannot survive in high salinity condition then fungi are plant that lack chlorophyll of course they are uh, one of the plants which cannot prepare their own food and chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis which cannot happen in that then pollination is best defined we know that there is no again uh, not much to debate or discuss in that here i have given a for those who have forgotten the concept here the pollen this is the anther and this is uh, this is then anther and stamen and this is then uh, pollinated by insects like bees to the stigma of the female part and if self pollination can also occur where the pollen pollen grains are uh, they are <coughs> inserted or uh, they are dispersed over the same uh, in the same flower then plants receive their nutrients mainly from soil whatever we have the nitrates or whatever fertilizers we use the phosphates and uh, uh, potash uh, the all this muriate of potash then uh, this is also a common question we have this uh, trees which are a type of coniferous trees and they are uh, found in the high latitudes uh, then what the difference between the two is that gymno the word gymno it corresponds to naked that is in this case the seeds are not enclosed so that is the gymnosperm in angiosperm the seeds are enclosed so that is uh, that is you might have seen uh, uh, the leaves of these trees like pine fir spruce cedar they are in the cone form of a cone 
and this angiosperms can be further classified into monocotyledons and dicotyledons so the answer here is gymnosperms then from uh, following pairs find the one which is correctly matched of course scurvy is caused by the deficiency of vitamin c so that is ascorbic acid thiamine is vitamin b1 then tuberculosis we have ats that is te uh, tetanus antitoxin tetanus uh, is uh, tetanus is ats tuberculosis is bcg that is bacillus calmant urine and malaria is chlorio queen which we uh, very well know it is extracted from the bark of the cinchona tree then animal without red blood cells is earthworms this is a factual question this does not had, uh, have rbcs or red blood corpuscles rather it has hemoglobin in that which provides the red color to the blood but red blood cells are not there then we all know the ultimate form the simplest form of uh, carbohydrates which can then be burned during respiration to generate energy is glucose then most of the enzymes are proteins they are basically the amino acids which are linked together in chains to form those enzymes then attempted vaccination first that is of course edward jenner then after this uh, experiment the smallpox vaccine was developed so we have quickly come to the end of the science section there is another important although i know you guys are very adept at uh, you know this math section but some questions if you are that data i'll just uh, quickly discuss what uh, shortcuts we can use so shashi loses 25% by selling oranges so we can see that the actual price if we calculate the actual price so 25% so 150 per dozen so 150 it means that he has sold it at the 75% of the original cost price so i will not discuss it further so we will just divide 150 by 0.75 we'll just cut it so 200 200 is the actual cost price on which it uh, he has incurred a loss now he has to sell them at a profit of 20% and that is 200 into 1.2 will be that will be equal to 240 i'll not discuss much uh, this in detail then we have lens this is a formula uh, which you should be knowing so the lens of the diagonal are given so the <clears throat> perimeter of the rhombus in this case will be equal to 4a where a is equal to p square plus q square upon 2 where p and q are the lens of the diagonal so if you put it in this uh, formula you will arrive at the answer 52 centimeter a train of length very common question even asked in the civil service examination so you have to calculate the relative speed will which will be since they are moving in the same direction so the uh, relative speed or actual speed will be 60 minus 18 and uh, which will be equal to 42 kilometers per hour so 140 140 divided by it will be 42 but what you have to uh sorry 60 it will be added sorry uh, my mistake if we it would have been added in in the case that the train and the dog were moving towards each other in this case since they are moving so the actual time which would have taken place had the dog been at a constant position so that will be greater you can remember this concept so 60 plus uh, 60 kilometers per hour plus 18 kilometers per hour that is uh, 78 and because it is in kilometer per hour you have to multiply it by 5 by 18 so by calculating this you will reach the answers 12 seconds this is an interesting uh, question which amongst me also so how to you know you can read the question i'll just give an explanation so basically the clock is gaining 24 hours now we have to determine the exact time not the time the time that the clock that uh, faulty clock is showing is already given so we have to take that into consideration so if 24 hours are spent so the clock by gaining that uh, 10 minutes instead of for 24 hours it will show 24 plus 10 by 60 hours 
ओके सो दिस विल बी अराउंड ट्वेंटी सो दिस विल बी अराउंड ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स विल कॉरेस्पॉन्ड टू वन फोर्टी फाइव वन फोर्टी फाइव बाय सिक्स आवर्स सो वन फोर्टी फाइव बाई सिक्स आवर्स नाउ दी करेंट दी करेक्ट टाइम दी टाइम शो शोन बाय दी फोर्टी क्लॉक इज इलेवन ए एम सो वी कैन से दैट फ्रॉम सिक्स ए एम टू इलेवन ए एम द टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम दैट इज टेकन बिकॉज सेट राइट एट सिक्स ए एम सो इट विल बी सिक्स ए एम टिल नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स प्लस फाइव दैट इज ट्वेंटी नाइन आवर्स सो नाउ वी कैन से दैट वन फोर्टी फाइव बाय सिक्स आवर्स इट कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू ट्वेंटी फोर सो वॉट हाउ मेनी आवर्स विल ट्वेंटी नाइन कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू सो वी विल हैव समथिंग लाइक दिस so we can uh, solve this sorry so we can solve this easily and by you know simplifying the equation further we can reach this answer 48 minutes past 10 then at what time between 5 and 6 will the two hands of watch go inside that is again interesting question if you remember that if we imagine a clock so currently the time is Five. So the to coincide, this minute hand has to cover this angle, which is one fifty degrees, because this hole is one eighty degrees, and this between this is thirty degrees. So one fifty plus thirty, this is one eighty. So it has to cover one fifty degrees. Again, like we used in the one of the previous questions, the concept of relativity. This, if we calculate the speed. of the minute hand so the minute hand is covering 360 degrees in 60 minutes so it is 6 degree per minute and similarly if we calculate for the hour hand it is covering 30 degrees 30 degrees in 60 minutes so that is 0.5 so the relative speed to catch up because they are moving in the same direction that will be 5.5 degree per minute if you divide 150 by 5.5 you will reach this option okay anil and suman the i will not go by the conventional unitary method i'll uh, tell you a sort of uh, shortcut or better explanation so in these type of questions what you can uh, do is that you can take the lcm of two of this which whichever is given two Uh, you know sort of approximation you will see so 20 and 12 uh, when we take the lcm it is 60 so let us assume that the total unit of work to be done is 60 units so work done by anil alone is so 60 units in 20 days anil can do so 60 units of work so in one day anil can do 3 units of work and if anil and suman can work together in 12 days so in 12 days they are completing 60 units of work in one day they will uh, complete 5 units of work now they are working together so if we consider one day's work so uh, here anil is doing 3 units of work in one day so 3 and uh, if we take the time uh, the unit of work take uh, done by suman in one day as x and then we multiply it by uh, sorry one day's work one day's work total work is 5 units so here also here we can say that x will be equal to 2 so now suman's one day work is 2 uh, two units two units per day so he is doing two units work in uh, Uh, one day, so sixty sixty unit of work it he will do in one by two into sixty, so that is thirty days. Then in a class of fifty five students, now again if uh, I'll not go by the official method that is in the uh, NCERT books that is by formulas and sets. So here the important point to know is that each student likes to play at least one of the two games. So there will be no as. Uh, like if we have set so this complete 55 will be corresponding to a whole one unit so if we in simple terms if we consider this uh a b and c and the total this we have a plus b 
plus c is equal to 55 where and uh, we can define a those only a are those such uh, those students who play only cricket c are those children who only play badminton and b are those which play both cricket and badminton so we have to write both cricket and badminton so now 55 students one equation we have got then 34 like to play cricket so they it is written play cricket and not only cricket so a plus b will be equal to 34 and uh, b plus c will be equal to 26 so if we solve all this equation we will get answer c that is b equal to 5 okay, we are just nearing the end of the maths section so what are the two natural numbers whose product is and whose square this might seem to you who have not practiced a lot a uh, bit difficult question but here we'll use the uh, for approximation we'll use the formula of a plus b whole square which is a square plus b square is equal to 2 a b so here we have a plus b whole square is equal to we have sum of squares is 5 2 0 0 and plus 2 a b that is 48 100 so a plus b whole square will be equal to 10,000 if we take the square root it will be 100. So now from here you can directly arrive at the option that is this is uh, ruled out, this is ruled out, this is ruled out and this is the only option left. You can cross check it by if you want to cross check it you can multiply it 16 to 40 is 2400 and if you do the sum of the squares it will come out to be 5200 then how many numbers between 100 and 500 here the between is to be noted so 4 5 and 6 so here we what we'll do is we take the lcm the lcm of uh, these three numbers will be 60 okay so 60 that is the numbers which will be divisible by all these numbers have to be divisible by 60 so between 100 and 500 we can uh, so we can calculate the number of multiples of 60 so after 100 we have 120 then uh, 180 and uh, then uh, 240 here we can uh, go so on uh, uh, below 500 and we will come to the answer 7 then in a mixture of 70 kg the ratio of sand and cement is 4 uh, is to 1 so if we take uh, the sand and cement 4 is to 1 so here if we apply again the ratio proportion i'll not elaborate for, uh, on this so if we take the common ratio as x so 5x is equal to 70 kg x will be equal to 14 common factor so the amount actual amount of uh, sand is 14 into uh, 4 is 56 and uh, cement is uh, 14 kg so that comes out to be 70 kg how much sand should be added to the mixture so we can simply write an equation 56 plus x upon 14 will be equal to 6 is to 1 when we solve this we can get 28 kg so that brings us to the end of the math section and quickly we will proceed to the geography part so which is the chief heavenly body of the solar system again all source of energy is sun so no rocket science or nothing much to discuss now interior which elements are abundant in the formation just for fact we no longer use that terminology that is Cial, Sima, Nife instead we use the Felsic, Mafic and Nife so Felsic is basically for the continental crust Mafic is for the uh, basaltic oceanic crust and the interior is mostly made of nickel and iron then geographical cycle of erosion this is a factual question so basically the answer is w n davis william morris davis then in which hemisphere roaring 40s furious 50s and shrieking 60s so we know that these are talking about the westerly winds in the southern hemisphere why they are roaring furious and shrieking because there is less, less land mass in the south southern hemisphere as compared to the northern hemisphere so the uh, westerlies in the northern hemisphere they are not Freaking or not as furious as those in the southern hemisphere. So you can relate like this. Sargasso Sea is uh, Sargasso Sea is a relatively stable or calm sea, which is basically uh, comprising of seaweed. So that is on the 
uh, eastern part eastern part uh, of the north american continent the southeastern part and that is that comes under the north atlantic ocean then boundary line between india and china no uh, rocket science in that mcmohan that is the uh, line arunachal pradesh line if we consider the aksai chain line they they are demarcated by two lines one is the actual lac then we have the mcdonald line we also have the uh, mccartney line so radcliffe line is india pakistan indra point we all know durand line is between pakistan and afghanistan then rajasthan receives you know geography if you have uh, you read the ncert you know you can easily see uh, read this so basically in uh, rajasthan we have the aravalli mountains which are very old uh, fold mountains which have uh, disintegrated and not as high as the himalayas or the western ghats so there is no orographic barrier to provide the uplift forced uplift to the air coming from the arabian sea to cause rainfall in that area that is why the rainfall does not occur oh. there and this is again factual question project tiger we all know so it is 1973 this is uh, you know you have to know if you are reading the current affairs so national biodiversity the theme is building a shared future for life project tiger is a tiger conservation program then karewas we know in the kashmir valley specifically the jhelum valley which uh, is famous for meandering despite the fact it is a, uh, that it is in youthful stage so we know that saffron is very famous for that then which state in india is leading producer of thorium so according to the details or the surveys which have been conducted we are talking about the producer and not the last state which has the largest reserves of thorium if we consider the largest reserves of thorium that the state then the state will be andhra pradesh followed by odisha and then the other states but as far as production of thorium is concerned we have heard about the monazite sands on the malabar coast so that comes under kerala then this is a factual question following places newspaper print paper industry is located so out of this durgapur we you know some uh, connections you can make that durgapur we have the steel plant kanpur is mostly uh, if we can say the textile industry and uh, so there is nepanagar is there that is uh, in the southern southwestern part of madhya pradesh so it is the uh, this is uh, the paper uh, pulp industry mill and where was the first coal mine in india mind again this is factual question so rani ganj is very famous for uh, uh, rani ganj in west bengal we it's very famous for the coal mining so i have also given some uh, explanation which you can read whenever you have time then census of india scheduled tribes so since census delayed the 2011 census even from the point of view of other state pcs capf or even civil services examination this cannot be ignored we if you have read it you should have read it by now so that is the wheel then total geographical area of bihar state is again by survey standard the only confusion would be in this so actually this is the c option that is 94163 square kilometer toro bihar uh, there is uh, nothing to discuss in that it is river kosi then here uh, the telhar kund waterfall again you have to be well versed with the geography of bihar it is in the kaimu district of bihar then Asia's largest and freshwater oxbow lake in Bihar. There is a Kaver Lake. Just for illustration purposes, if uh, you have doubts about what is the fresh uh, oxbow lake, we are not talking about the freshwater lake. If we consider the Asia's largest freshwater lake, then that is Lake Baikal in uh, Russia. But we are talking about oxbow lake. So, in simple words, because we know that Bihar, in Bihar, the rivers, the rivers coming from the Himalayas, they Uh, or the central highlands they enter uh, the middle uh, the mature stage so they start to meander so they start to meander sometimes what happens is the meander they increase so much that finally it is broken from the middle so again this in order to efficient efficiently utilize the energy the river uh, does this so again this small portion of water will be left like this so this will be called an oxbow lake then uh, 
largest gold reserves is also factual geological survey of india i have written some of these stats so jamui district is there silk city again factual bagalpur and female literacy as per again census 2011 of india we have come that is 51.50 percent so we have efficiently and comprehensively uh, completed the three sections and if you have any comments you can uh, you know write in the when the video is uploaded and uh, for the rest of the sections i would like to invite my other colleagues from integrated edu systems